life was perfect. I couldn't ask for anything more. I was truly blessed with an amazing, healthy child who was um, full of energy um, from the moment he woke up to the moment he went to bed. Jordan was a wild spirit. He, um, you couldn't talk him into doing something if he didn't want to do it. He was pretty headstrong. He had the most amazing smile and was a very, very happy child. He liked doing things together. We called ourselves the Three Musketeers. We did a lot of things together. Uh, so we had decided um, to take a trip to Costa Rica and we stayed um, at two amazing resorts there. So the last day that we were at that resort, Jordan was waiting for me and he goes, Dad, Mom's got a massage and she's doing a pedicure and it's just you and me. What do you want to do? I said, what if we go up to the hot spring that's got the water slide? And he's like, okay. And he and I spent six hours going down that slide. He wore me out and he wore out several other people. Jordan swam on Tuesday. Um, we left the second resort on Thursday to head back into San Jose for our flight back to Orlando. The headache started on the Thursday. It was a down day. He didn't want to do much. Friday we got up in that morning and we headed back to the airport. We flew back into Orlando. By the time we got the luggage and got through customs, his headache was pretty bad. We were a little concerned because it had been three days in a row and it had gotten worse each day. By um, midday on Saturday, he was really having excruciating headaches. And he was just holding his head and saying that his head hurt really, really bad. And he complained that his neck felt stiff. We put him to bed and he started vomiting probably an hour later. The next morning he still wasn't feeling any better. So we, we definitely decided that we were taking him to the emergency room. And we did, and he was, he was just so weak at that point. They gave him um, morphine. It couldn't have been 10 seconds after they started the morphine drip, his eyes, his pupils dilated. He started having hallucinations. He wasn't making sense, and then over the next hour and a half, he didn't say as much, he wasn't seeing as much, and then the uncontrollable shaking, and he'd flail his legs around and his arms around, he couldn't control them and uh, they brought the ICU team in just as he had a seizure. Later that night on Tuesday, it got worse, about five or six o'clock, and um, his vitals started dropping. So one of the clinical staff said, uh, recommended bringing in a neurologist um, to look at you know, the fluid in the brain. So we gave him the approval to bring a neurosurgeon in, and drilled and put a little uh, drain on top and they actually collected the fluid that came out as they were reducing the pressure and in that sample is when they found the amoeba. You know, we googled it and the third click we found out that it's 99% fatal. So when they said that, I knew Jordan was going to die. So we swam on a Tuesday, he died Wednesday morning at 6.35 a.m., seven days and 12 hours after swimming. The amoeba has to, the water has to be forced up the nose and apparently, you know, with going down the slide so many times, um, that's where he was infected. You say, what if I'd known more about it? Or what if there'd been a sign there? Um, we, we wouldn't let him swim because we knew it was 99% fatal. I want to make one comment for parents, one day, out of our 10 day trip for four hours. That's how I lost my son. It, it's very easy to consider it rare. A lot of people say it, the press likes to say it's very rare. So it can make yourself very complacent. You can say, oh, it's not gonna happen to me. Well, Shelly and I are here to tell you, it certainly can happen to you. And if it does, it's gonna rock your world.